Hi guys, welcome to another Fusion School video. I am very thankful for the support you guys gave me on my last video. It really motivates me to make more videos. Our today's topics are Coulomb's law, relative permittivity of dielectric constant, Coulomb's law in vector form, principle of superposition, equilibrium of three charges, types of equilibrium, equilibrium of a system. Let's start with Coulomb's law. Let's take two charged particles Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance r. The charged particles will interact with each other through a force called as electrostatic force represented by F. The force can be attractive and repulsive depending upon the nature of charges. Unlike charges attract each other while like charges repel each other. Here force is directly proportional to charges and inversely proportional to the distance of separation. F is directly proportional to Q1 into Q2 upon R square. On adding a proportionality constant K, we get force is equals to KQ1 into Q2 upon R square, where K is Coulomb's constant or electrostatic force constant. K is not a universal constant as its value changes on changing the medium of the system. K is equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon where epsilon is called as electric permittivity and its value is different for different mediums. Epsilon for space is represented by epsilon naught and its value is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square. On putting the value of epsilon for space in formula of k, we get k for space is equals to 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square. When in a question nothing is said about medium, we consider it as space. Note: Here the charges are at rest or almost in rest. Q1 and Q2 should be small particles or point charged. If the distance between two spheres is very much greater than their radius, then we can treat these spheres as point charges. Relative permittivity of dielectric constant represented by epsilon r. Epsilon r equals to epsilon upon epsilon naught. Epsilon is electric permittivity of medium while epsilon naught is electric permittivity of free space. Epsilon r is unitless. Force between two charges q1 and q2 in any medium equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon into q1 into q2 upon r square. On putting the value of epsilon in terms of epsilon naught and epsilon r, we get force is equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught into epsilon r whole into q1 into q2 upon r square. Point to remember, epsilon r is equals to force in vacuum upon force in medium. Coulomb's law in vector form. Let's take two charged particles q1 and q2 separated by a distance small r. The position of vectors for both the particles are r1 vector and r2 vector. Force on first particle due to second is f12. And in that case, r vector is r21 which represents the force is applied by second charge on first charge. Force on first due to second equals to kq1 q2 upon r square into r2 to 1 k force on second due to first equals to kq1 q2 upon r square into r1 to 2 k according to vector's law of algebra r1 vector is equals to r vector plus r2 vector r vector is equals to r1 vector minus r2 vector and r1 vector is equals to x1 i k plus y1j k plus z1k k. R2 vector is equals to x2y k plus y2j k plus z2k k. R vector is equals to x1 minus x2y k, y1 minus y2j k plus z1 minus z2k k. R equals to under root of x1 minus x2 ka whole square plus y1 minus y2 ka whole square plus z1 minus z2 ka whole square. F12 vector equals to 
minus of f to one vector as they are opposite vectors, which means they are of same magnitude and opposite in direction. Principle of superposition. If two or more than two charges are present in a region, the net force on any charge is equals to vector addition of all the forces exerted by different charges. Net force on Q1 equals to F1 vector plus F2 vector plus F3 vector plus F4 vector. Note: If symmetrical charges are placed at different corners of a regular polygon, then force on a charged particle small q placed at the center will be zero. It doesn't matter what kind of charge small q is. Equilibrium of three charges. If nature of two charges is same, then equilibrium point will be somewhere between these two charges, and it will be closer to the smaller charge. Let's take a small q charge at that equilibrium point. Suppose its distance from smaller charge is small x, then its direction from bigger charge is r minus x, as distance of separation of q1 and q2 is r. For small q charge to be in equilibrium. Force applied by both charges on it should be equal and opposite. So F1 equals to F2. K capital Q1 small Q upon x square is equals to K capital Q2 into small Q upon R minus x ka whole square. On solving it, we get x equals to R under root Q1 upon under root Q1 plus under root Q2. Remember, here x is the distance from smaller charge. In questions, it can also ask distance from bigger charge, that is r minus x. If nature of two charges is opposite, then equilibrium point will be at extreme left or right side of the system, and it will be always be closer to the smaller charge. Let's take a small q charge at that equilibrium point. Suppose its distance from smaller charge is small x, then its direction from bigger charge is r plus x. For small q charge to be in equilibrium, force applied by both charges on it should be equal and opposite. So F1 equals to F2, then K capital Q1 into small q upon x square equals to K capital Q2 into small q upon r plus x ka whole square. On solving it, we get x equals to r root q1 upon root q2 minus root q1. types of equilibrium first stable equilibrium when a charge is displaced from its equilibrium position then it returns to its mean position example when this small q charge is moved along the axis towards any charge then the repulsive force will increase forcing it to move to its mean position if the displacement of the small q positive charge is very small compared to small r then the small q positive charge will show simple harmonic motion. The small q positive charge is similar to the wall in this diagram. If we slightly displace the wall on either side, the wall will perform simple harmonic motion and will eventually return to its mean position. Second, unstable equilibrium. In the above case, if we replace the small q positive charge with small q negative charge, then this equilibrium will become unstable along axis. When the small q negative charge is moved along the axis towards any charge, then the attractive force will increase, forcing it to leave its mean position. The small q negative charge is similar to the wall in this diagram. If we slightly displace the ball, the net gravitational force will increase, thus pulling it to the side. Equilibrium of a system If net force on each charge is zero, then system will be in equilibrium condition. Example, in this case, net force on capital Q charge is zero. It doesn't matter if it is positive or negative. For the system to be in equilibrium, capital Q have to be minus small q upon root 3. If the charge capital Q is positive, then the system can never be in equilibrium, while the charge can. That's all for today. Link for notes and questions related to this topic is available in description. Leave your suggestions in the comment section below. 
thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe for more